Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you speak to us now and uh, your anointing to be here, your word to come, open our ears, our hearts to receive your word, Lord, in Jesus' name and bless us abundantly, I pray. I pray in the name of Jesus and thank you. Amen. Now, I would like to start with uh, uh, some biblical basis for a traveler's ministry. And uh, it, uh, I believe, it will have a good effect on us. Let us uh, open Luke or Luke chapter 4 My name is Plamen Petrov from Sofia, Bulgaria and I believe that the Lord is calling us to internationally go and preach the gospel You see? Let me start first uh, with uh, uh, Matthew 28, in, uh, 19, that the Lord Jesus says, Go and make, dis make disciples of all nations. All nations. Go into all nations. In Mark 16, 15, he says, Go and preach the gospel to every creature. Go and preach the gospel to all the world. In uh, Luke uh, 24, uh, 47, he says that repentance and forgiveness of sins has to be preached to all nations. In uh, Acts 1.8, it says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So you see everything with the Lord grows and he never said stay here until the end. He says go, go, go and the last comments are connected with go. Now we come back to Luke chapter 4 verses 42, 43. At the daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him, and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. What the people did? They tried to keep him from leaving them. And this is, this is understandable. Everybody wants the one he, he or she loves to be around him. We want and the parents want their children to be around them. But anyway, Jesus, they wanted to keep him for them. But, he said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also. To the other towns also. Because that is why I am sent, I was sent. The purpose for him to be sent on earth was not to stay in one place, but to go and to preach everywhere in this region the good news. So you see, usually, uh, and this, I experience this also in our, in our church, uh, the people want me to stay there, but Jesus wants us to go and we are to train, to disciple other people from the local people to, to take the work of uh, the feeding, pastoring the churches and we are to go. Uh, probably this is for me, I don't know, but uh, anyway it is in the Word of God and many pastors like to stay. Let me say about uh, our country, uh, I know, I know about uh, three 
evangelistic ministries uh, in Bulgaria and, uh, and so many, 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 many pastors, but uh, not many evangelistic ministries. Uh, I don't say that there are only three, this is what I know. And many others do evangelism, go and do some things, but uh, I believe that the Lord wants to raise up evangelists in these last days for the last harvest. Okay, praise the Lord. Now, let me go to Ephesians, Ephesians 15. And uh, there it is said that uh, Ephesians 6, 15, it is said here, and with your feet fitted, fitted with readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. No, the, another translation says that our feet uh, uh, with, with shoes put on with uh, preparation of the gospel of peace. So we, we are to be prepared to go and preach the gospel of peace. We are to be prepared and this is, this is, uh, this is military power. The Lord wants us to be prepared to go in the territory of the enemy and to take back what he has stolen. And so we are to go with our feet to testify about Jesus. And in Luke 10, 19, Jesus says, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. I give you power to trip upon serpents and scorpions and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And you see here, he says, that we'll treat upon it is with our feet. As we are walking with our feet, put in shoes, we can tremble upon serpents and scorpions, and we can, we can overcome the, the powers of the darkness when we go and evangelize, when we are prepared for the gospel of peace to be preached. In Romans, very good verse, Romans 10, 15, there are two things here. And he said, how can they preach unless they are sent? The word sent is very important. And I want to connect it with uh, Acts chapter 13, verses uh, two and three, namely, Acts 13. Uh, as they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and so for the work to which I have called them. Separate me. So the Holy Spirit separates them, but he commands to the people in the church to do it. So after that they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and said, sent them off. So they were sent by the Holy Spirit and by the church. And the sending by the church means not only fast, pray, lay hands, but also I believe it was connected with financial sending. And uh, the Lord sends, it is said, how can they preach unless they are sent by God, but also they have to be sent by the church, they have to be sent by people with one mind, with by partners, who sent this evangelistic ministry and helping in prayer, in fasting, and in financial support. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. How beautiful are the feet. You see, the feet means we can say to them, today wheels, we can say uh, wings, we can travel with cars, we can travel with airplane, 
but it is very, very beautiful in the sight of God. Those who go to bring the gospel to the world, everything that he uses is beautiful because brings good news. In uh, 1 Corinthians 9, in 1 Corinthians 9, 1 Corinthians 9, um, there are two verses that I want to emphasize. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 16 says, um, Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. It is the second part of the verse. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. And I just want to tell you that we are obliged to preach the gospel. If we do not do it, we'll enter in flesh, in sin, in different things, because we, we walk astray from the call of God. We are obliged to preach, to preach the gospel. Not everyone can go and preach the gospel to India or uh, other country, or uh, you cannot go in every country in, uh, to go uh, in every country, uh, France, Spain, uh, United States, Africa, uh, India, and so on. But everyone can be involved in evangelism by partnership, by praying, by supporting everyone. And you will see later that everyone that takes partnership in, in some ministry takes from the grace of the ministry and takes from the reward of the ministry. So there is a wage for everyone from the ministry. The Lord blesses everyone. Now, in, in the same chapter, 1 Corinthians 9, 14, it is said again, In the same way, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel, or should live from the gospel. So the Lord has commanded it, say, commanded is the word, this is command of the Lord. The preachers of the gospel, the evangelists, like ministers, everyone has to evangelize, but the ministers, the evangelists, should receive, should live with the finances that came from the gospel, otherwise they cannot go and minister in different countries, places and so on. Um, and let me open Luke chapter 8 and I want to show you something very, very interesting here. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another. You see, Jesus traveled, pro proclaimed the goodness of the kingdom of God and the twelve disciples was, were with him. This is the best way of training when the disciples travel with the teacher. So it is not sitting and listening, but only, but also traveling and ministering together and to watching. This is practical teaching. Now, and also some women who have been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Now you see not only the disciples were there, but some people who had profited from this ministry. They were healed, they were delivered. And now it says Mary called Magdalene from whom seven demons had come out, Joanna, the wife of Cusa, the manager of Herod's household. You see some important people. Susanna, also some important person, and uh, many others. Now these people came to minister to them. And I can say this about them. These people profited from the ministry. It was ministered to them, and so now they ministered to others and ministered to the minister, Jesus. They minister to him. You see, it is said, um, 
that they were helping, they were ministering to Jesus. Number one, it was volunteer work. Every ministry needs volunteers to help with something. If you have profited from one ministry, it is not a great thing to minister to this ministry. It is a blessing. You are part, you become part of this ministry by volunteer work. And number two, they were helping to support or they were uh, financing out of their own income, of, out of their own means. So they, they were, there was two things they made, these people that were healed, delivered. Then number one, they they uh, ministered, they gave, his, they gave their, their labor, their time. It is a, a kind of giving, it is a kind of support. And number two, they gave from their finances also, so that the ministry could go. You see, Jesus with 12 disciples uh, cannot travel so easily and feed all of them and so on if there was no income. And the Lord uses these people to bring this supply to the ministry. Well, praise the Lord about this. Uh, I want to, to show also in Matthew chapter 9, 35, chapter 9, 35 verse, Jesus went throughout all the towns and villages, all the towns. So Jesus was going and ministering everywhere, all cities and villages. And another thing here is uh, in John, very, very important, in John 4, 35, 36. John 4, 35, 36. Now, do you not say four months more and then the harvest? I tell you, open or lift up your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Let me see here. Number one, he says, you say there is more time, but there is not time. You are to go and minister, says the Lord. There is no time. The time is limited. We like to make things slowly and later because we have some cares of the life. But he says, you must go now. You must start now. And he said then, you lift up your eyes and look at the field. If you do not lift up your eyes, your eyes are looking down at the dust. You are looking at fleshly things, your own problems, your own cares. There are many things that we care, we need. But the Lord said, first seek the kingdom of God and all other things will be added to you. So cast your care, uh, care upon the Lord for He cares for you. If we care about ourselves too much, He doesn't care because we care. We have to leave our care to Him, that He may care for us. And so, if we want to do our own things, then we cannot do the work of the Lord, because He says, first the kingdom, then the, the other things. First the kingdom you seek, then the other things I will give to you. And uh, so He said, look at the fields, look at the kingdom, look at the works, do not look down at your own problems because the harvest is ready to, to be ripped arrived, and we need to send ministers to go there and as it is said the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few so pray to the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to the harvest so pray for our ministry please that the Lord may send us and also help us to be sent to do the work of the ministry. I tell you, 
open your eyes and or lift up your eyes and look at the fields. They are ready for harvest. Even now, look now, even now the reaper draws his wages, even now the harvests the crop for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. So I can say by this that every one of us, you sow into the ministry that we may go and reap the fruit of it. But each one has his part of the ministry and each one receives wage, receives fruit, rece receives reward for what he or she is doing. So you become part of the ministry by this. And here I want to, to open in Philippians. Philippians, because it is very important portion of the scriptures from verse 4 to verse 7 in all in all my prayers for all of you the partners of this ministry they receive prayer as the partners of Paul's ministry prayer for all of you daily prayer for all that become part of the ministry. This is spiritual uh, covering. I always pray with joy because of your partnership, the word partnership in the gospel. Partnership in the gospel. So you become partners of this work in the gospel. You become not unfruitful. This is great opportunity. You can be right there and you can claim that what fruit has come is also your fruit because you have taken part in this. We cannot do, I cannot do anything if the Lord doesn't give me uh, uh, partners, doesn't give me army to pray for me and to support me. Otherwise, I cannot do it. So, because of your partnership in the gospel, from the first day until now, which means the Lord wants the partnership relationships the, to be continual, continual relationships. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ, which means that this partnership relationships have to continue until the coming of Jesus Christ. Of course, it is not obligatory, obligatory, but this is the desire of the Lord. So you are engaged in the work of evangelism by praying and supporting. And he says, the Lord may continue to bless you and to develop these things until the last day. He wants uh, relationships that are um, covenant relationships between the minister and the partners. It is right for me to feel this way about you, all of you, since I have you in my heart. For where, whether I am in chains of, or defending or confirming the gospel, all of you share in the God's grace with me. So, the partners share the grace of God. They share the anointing of God with the ministry. If you are part of this ministry, the anointing, the grace that is upon this ministry, rests on your life. And there is much more. When you have need, and you call us, you say, I have need, special need. We can pray the prayer of agreement that is in Matthew 18. It says, if two of you agree about something, you receive it. So if your faith is not enough, if you, um, if you are alone and you need somebody to agree with you, I can do it praying for you that the Lord can meet your needs 
whether it is financial, spiritual, physical, and whatever. You, you may have no faith in your field, but I may have it. The Lord can give me the faith for things that you cannot believe, and we can agree and receive the answer. You can give me prayer requests for this thing. Okay? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Uh -huh. So now, let me see what more can I say about this. I think that what I said up to now is almost enough. Only I will read just one more scripture and it is Mark chapter 6 Mark chapter 6 from verse 1 to verse 6 Jesus left there and went to his hometown accompanied by his disciples when the Sabbath came, he became to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things? They asked. What's this wisdom that has been given him that he even does miracles? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon? Aren't his sisters have here with us? And they took offense at him. I, I will stop here. The devil tempted Eve with the words does the Lord really say that you will die if you eat of the fruit of the trees? The devil came with a question. When Jesus was in the wilderness tempted by the same devil, the devil came to him with the words, Are you the... the, the if you are... If you are the Son of God, and put again question and here again these are the thoughts that the devil gave to these people to stop the work of the Lord and look this is the home town of Jesus they know him as child they know him as a carpenter they know his mother his father they know his brothers they know his profession. They know so many things about him, but they do not know his godly side. They didn't know the power of the Holy Spirit that is in him. They couldn't believe that the Lord can use somebody they know. So they looked on the human side. And today we can look on the human side or on the godly side. He went to his own town and was not received because they looked on Jesus the carpenter the brother of, Mary, of uh, James and so on the, his sisters were was there his mother was there so uh, anyway I cannot see his father here probably he was dead until this time number four uh, verse 4, Jesus said to them, Only in his um, hometown, among his relatives, and in his own house is prophet without honor. Prophet is not accepted in his town, among his relatives, and in his house. So you see, familiarity is a great problem for acceptance of the minister and uh, 
I see he could do not who he could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them and he was amazed at their lack of faith so they lacked faith because they didn't see the work of the Lord in his life you see the Son of God they couldn't recognize the work of the Lord they recognized only the human side and Jesus said the prophet is not without honor and acceptance except in his own town or city his own relatives in his own house so there is something here everywhere he is accepted but in his town not accepted familiarity is a great problem and I believe today the Lord is doing something good he starts to deliver the ministers from from the bondage to stay in their own place and to think that they have to save their town you see sometimes the Lord will use you to go to a different place and to use another person to go to this place because when you come from other place you may be received as a prophet because it says that the prophet is not without honor but only in his own town and so on so the Lord sometimes changes ministries and I believe he will change ministries because we are a body we need each other and we need to change grace the Bible says in 1st Peter 4 10 that according to the grace to the gifts given to each one of us we are to minister to one to another as good stewards of the manifold wisdom of God grace of God so you see what's happening we are to minister according to the gift not according to the need oh yeah praise the Lord we are to minister according to the gift and not according to the need because according to minister according to the gift means that you minister according to the grace of God according to the call of God but to minister according to the need means to minister in um, the natural and to think that you can help the Lord will send the right ministers for every place and for every work and ev every one of us each one of us has to enter into his or her calling if you are called in a business field please do not go and become missionary if you are called some, to do some other job minister to the Lord working in your job if you are called to the business minister to the Lord uh, making business making money and supporting the ministers of the Lord if you are called in a different field go there where the gift of God is there is the grace of God and to minister to the Lord doesn't mean that you have to become evangelist you can be evangelist by supporting evangelist going to do the work and you can pray you can support you can be interested you can live with what is happening and you can fulfill your call in this way it is great it is marvelous what would be if all Christians become evangelists leave their job and and go somewhere and missionaries there is nobody to work and to support with finances there is nobody in the world who will, who will tell the world about Jesus in your job and, and everywhere yes we need to understand this now uh, I would like to finish with these words war is me if I do not preach the gospel says Paul 
I can say the same, and you can say the same, and we can do it together. In Galatians 5.16, it is said, you are, follow the Spirit, follow, follow the Spirit, and you will not do the desires of the flesh. If we are in the call of God, preaching the gospel to the world, then you will never enter into the sea when we are in the call of God. But we, if we do not go to, to do the job that the Lord is giving to us, then the flesh comes and with the flesh the sin comes. And many people have fallen in sin because they do not follow, follow the call and the leadership, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. There are two, two strong desires in us. One, the desire of the flesh, and the other, the desire of the Spirit. If you want to follow the Spirit, and if you follow the Spirit, you will not follow the, the desires of the flesh. But if you do not follow the desire of the Spirit, you have nothing to do else than to, to, to follow the desires of the flesh. And many people try not to sin, but this is not the way. Follow the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, walk in the call of God, and you will be on fire, you will be strong, you will fulfill the will of God for your life. This is marvelous. This is really marvelous. So, what is the purpose for partners and partnership? We say, Number one, the partner is intercessor for the ministry. You pray, and I'm asking the people that want to be partners of our ministry, pray at least one minute per day for, for our ministry. If you forget some day, please, the next time, the next day, pray two minutes, at least. This is almost nothing, you see, but I just ask you for a little bit. Then the other thing is volunteer, volunteer work. There is a way that you can do it to help us because we need this volunteer work. And the third thing is giving. Give and it shall be given to you, says the Bible. This is the third thing, that these are three things that are, that are important for every ministry. To, to, to succeed in it, for, for every partner to help and to be blessed. And uh, you see, the Bible says in Proverbs, and I cannot give you the verse now, but it says, prepare your work on the field and then build your house. Uh, this is what we are doing, and uh, uh, we have we are to put the work of the Lord on the first place, and then the personal things will be added by the Lord. Seek the kingdom of God, and all other things will be added. The necessary, the necessary things. Uh, this is the same with you, with me. Put the work of the Lord on first place; otherwise, you cannot succeed. And the Lord speaks in Luke. 14, I think, a proverb about the call for uh, of the master for a, a, a wedding supper, and uh, one of the invited men said, I have bought a yoke of uh, oxen, I cannot come. The other said, I have bought a house, I cannot come. The other one said, uh, I'm married, I cannot come, so the, they lost the blessing, they lost the life, because they were too engaged in uh, earthly matters. But also the scripture says in Timothy, that in Second Timothy I think it is said that uh, no soldier is engaged in earthly matters because he wants to please his master. 
So if we are soldiers of the Lord, we are not to be engaged, but we are to be ready, prepared for the gospel, as it said. It is said in Ephesians 6. Now, you see, when the Lord called the uh, fishers, his disciples were fishers before that, he called them and immediately they, they left their father there, Zebedee was left, and immediately they followed. When he called Matthew, who was a levy, who was a, a tax collector, he left the money. He left the people in the money there and he followed Jesus. Imagine what can happen. He can go to the prison. How can you leave uh, the, the money of the of the of the service there Jesus said whoever puts his hand on the work of God and walk and watches behind is not worthy so we are to put our hands and to work for the Lord continually continually do not look behind like the wife lot uh, there are many who are called he says but a few that are chosen and in Romans 12 verse 1 and 2 Jesus said uh, this is Paul saying there that we are to give our bodies as living sacrifice we are to sacrifice our bodies for the work of the Lord. Give it to the Lord, your body. Use it for His glory. Use it for His glory. In uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, he speaks about the vision. Write it down that everyone can run with it. And I believe that the time is coming when we have to run. We must run and to work quickly because the time is limited we are to work to work quickly you know jesus said many are called few are chosen many people are called to to work for the lord but a few people answer this call and a few people qualify for this call because not many are ready to pay the price to give their bodies a living sacrifice if you give your body, you will be chosen one. Many are called, few are chosen, but who can find faithful person? And the Lord wants us to be faithful to Him, and not only to Him, but to evangelism and to His ministry. I believe the Lord has called us to evangelize the work of evangelists with signs and wonders with the word of God, God preached with power because the kingdom of God is not in word it is in power and I believe that we are to bring the presence and the power of God to the nations for salvation healing and deliverance that the kingdom of heaven may be filled with people and the hell emptied and the glory of the Lord to fill this earth and many to give glory to the Lord. And one day when we come before the Lord, we can hear the words, Welcome, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your master according to Matthew 25 we can enter because we have used what the Lord has given to us the question is do you use what you have for the Lord not what you don't have what you have do you have two fishes five breads do you have a little bit of oil? The Lord can, can multiply and use the little thing that you have for His glory. 
Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Bless each and every one that listens to this tape. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen.